Yes, people, Killer Keller here, live from Arts Arcade, Piccadilly Circus, London for Keller Vision. This is the Street Culture Podcast. This is where we deep dive into conversations from people of street culture origin that made their trailblazing debut into the commercial world globally and beyond. Today, we have kid adulthood, adulthood, actor, director, and more. Femi Oyeniran inside the place. Femi, welcome to the Street Culture Podcast. Thanks for having me, man. It's great to see you. This is awesome. Are you enjoying this? It's a different vibe, isn't it? I'm glad to be here, man. London's just, you know, I just love London so much. You know, I was born in Nigeria, born in Lagos, and um, like, you know, a part like Lagos and London means so much to me just because, like, I just, it just feels. I feel so rooted here, so mm-hmm. connected to here, man. Mm. Just the city, I love it. Yeah. I just love it so much. I think a lot of it is, I mean, it's it's definitely the 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 devil, you know. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I imagine growing up here throughout your childhood, you get to understand the fault lines and mm. the pitfalls. Exactly, exactly. But that's that's part of it. Like you know, that's part of the allure. Mm. That's part of why you love it. Isn't it? It's mm. that, you know, you know where not to go, you know where to go, mm. and you know where to, like, you know, walk the tightrope as well. Yeah, real talk. <laughs> like, I was thinking about this the other day, the whole idea of, you know, I remember when I remember when I got mugged. I remember when my house got broken into. <laughs> but these are kind of like stage-by-stage yeah. things, you know, gang-related stuff, accident and emergencies. Yeah. We almost have to go through these these stages yeah. so that we know not to do it again. And, no, again. and also these are these these are um, you know, sort of what marks the place for you, right? Mm. These experiences are what define us as people mm. and defines the place the place defines us and vice versa. So for me, yeah, man, this this is this is the place. This is home. Yeah, it's a hub as well, right? Yeah. Because you get a little bit of everything. It's what I say to people all the time. When you're like for me as an African kid growing up in, in the UK, in London, like you're getting a little bit of like, you know, we grew up watching American culture and yeah. that like that being aspirational, especially like the influence of hip hop and hip hop music and all of that stuff and the culture that comes with that. And then you've got like, you know, African culture that you're getting at home from your parents. Yeah. So like for me, I was born there. So it's even more like inside of who I am. And then you're getting a little bit of Caribbean culture and then yeah. you're getting a little bit of like, you know, Asian culture and the, the fact that you're living in the UK means you're getting UK culture. Yeah. Like, you know, and you realize how British you are when you, you leave the UK and you're like, for me, when someone comes up to me like, and I'm on yeah, road, yeah, yeah. I don't think of myself as British mm-hmm. until I leave it and then I'm the most British. Like, that, is, <laughs> that is, you know what? There's a lot to be said for that. I, <laughs> I feel it as well. Like, you know, even in a New York transit system, all of a sudden everyone's quite happy. And it's like, hold yeah. on, well, it's conservative here. Like, you know, where's my, where's my phone? Where's my newspaper? Anything, just hide me from this, you know? Mm, yeah, man. Uh, it's just part of our DNA. Yeah, isn't it, absolutely, British? absolutely. And uh, this this walk of life, I mean, you know, as a as a writer, director, actor, yeah. as a as a sponge to the culture. Yeah. I and mean, we'll get into the early history of, of yourself in street culture and, and you know what set precedence to what you became. But you must be, from a creative point of view, so enriched by all the things that you've either been influenced by or you see on a yeah. regular. Yeah, man. I think like that's. That's why I like London as well because it's dynamic. You don't know what you're like gonna experience next. You don't know what's going. It's not predictable, and like there's also new communities bringing new ideas all the time yeah. and shaping old ideas and making it into like different different ideas. And so for me, like I just love like you know watching people. I love meeting new people. I love like you know the fact that the sort of like food spot that I go to in Soho, mm-hmm. the guy that works there, Mo, he's my brethren now. I took him to like, he was like my dreams to go to Shoreditch House. I was like, is that your dream? Like, Yo. I was like, okay, I could do that for you. Like, yeah. you know, so I took him to Then we'll fix it. Yeah, it yeah do you know what I mean? I'm like, that's that. No, cause that was mad to me because yeah. like for him, he'd never been in there, but he thought it was like this crazy unattainable thing. I'm yeah. like, no, we could do that this weekend. Like just call me on Friday night, take my number. But that's the guy from my food spot. Mm. And so like, so the fact that, you know, like I can connect with him or like connect with some of the like, you know, sort of like the most famous actors in the world. Yeah. Like means a lot to me because I mean, it keeps you human and keeps you like real. Grounded. Yeah, man. Yo, that's the most important thing. I think for anybody that, now we're talking, we're talking 
uncle business here now. Mm. Right? When you go through a, a life, yeah. of these kind of little mini lives, and you realise what actually grounds you, yeah, and what actually it's attainable. Mm. Success is attainable, and those privileges, like the Soho houses and yeah. the superstar celebrity kind of yeah. red carpet events, they're all there. Yeah. They, they're all there, but it's more, it's more when when do you draw them out in your toolbox, and what actually, what actually grounds you and makes you a better person on a daily. No, exactly. And I think for me, it's like, you know, like connecting with people like Mo, mm. like from the food spot. Yeah. Like, and hearing his story and he's like, you know, you hear about, um, what do they call them? Small boats all the time. And he was like, like, you know, he's telling me his story. He goes, Femi, have you heard of small boats? I goes, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's my story. That's how I got into the country. And like speaking to him and Whoa. hearing his story, that's what yeah. that's what keep, makes me grateful, keeps me grounded. But at the same time, makes me realise that, you know, people, there's hope because this man went yeah. through all of He left Egypt, went through France, slept in the back of a lorry to get into the UK. I never had to do that. I've never experienced anything like that. But like the fact that he's here, like, you know, and we're able to go for a drink at mm. Sh Sh Shoreditch House, like shows that you know there's there's hope there's faith for anyone and also in London you could become whatever you want to mm. be and you can link with whoever you want to be connected to like you know yeah. f by just being yourself and being honest and being true you yeah. know and so like for stuff like that having family having kids and all of that has helped me and at the same time having faith is probably the most important side um of of what I do because um I think I'll be a worse person if I didn't have mm. faith. Wow, yeah. Because I want to do bad things all the time. It's kind of in our DNA, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I want to, like, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I want to be mean and rude yeah. and horrible all the time. And, like, you know, having faith has really helped me to, like, to manage that side yeah. and to be more philosophical and to be more um, thoughtful and, like, to be more considerate mm. in, in how I act and yeah. how I respond to people and how I engage with people. Yeah, uh, And so I, I think, you know... Those elements are, are what make me, but then a lot of it, like, you know, if I didn't live in London, mm. I wouldn't, you know, link with people like Mo and hear their mm. story. I'll just hear about those stories through the newspapers. Yeah. And that's not necessarily, that's mediated through someone else's editor or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to I wanna meet the Horse's real... Horse's mouth. No, I want to meet the real person. Yeah. I love a story. Yeah. I love telling stories and yeah. I love... Listening to stories. Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, script writers such a... I mean, John Sullivan, Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. And you've got to know these characters, Yeah, you have right? to know them, otherwise it can't be real. And and so so there's that side, and then there's also, like, you know, just, like, the conversations you have and all, like, the words. Sometimes people say stuff, I'm like, that sounds... That's a crazy sentence. Like, let me write that down or, like... Uh, or like how often what? do you have that? How often all does that happen? Really? I've got all these notes, like, really? of what people said. Like, oh, someone said, like, it made me laugh. Like, I was in L.A. and someone said a, a few weeks ago, and someone said, um, British people are... <laughs> um, might be, like, addicted to cynicism and I laughed <laughs> because he was like you know he was in LA like you know he's a British guy he lives in LA now and he was like you know what I was um, I, I, I came to London for a few days and not long ago and I was telling everyone I'm opening a restaurant and everyone couldn't wait to tell me like that's the worst business to get into <laughs> Like, that's the worst but like in yeah. LA yeah. when I was telling everyone I was opening the restaurant everyone was like oh my gosh yeah, that's sick it. like that is, but they go they go the opposite yeah, they're way they're like that's amazing like, they go, you're like gonna a whole be, other extreme you're going to be the best restaurant guy ever <laughs> yeah. like you know whereas in in, 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 um, in, in London they're like no it's not going to work bro yeah. like, have you thought about the fact that like the last hundred people to, to like you know set up a, a restaurant it's not worked. And so, yeah, so it's been interesting. Quit the cynicism and, uh, you know, pro, pro uh, positive PMA. I think it's balance. You know? I think life is about balance, bro. It is, yeah. I think, you know, some people, some people, like, you know, want that optimism all the time. Some people want that, you know, realism all mm. the time, that raw realism all the time. But um, I think um, it's about the balance, man. I think for me, like, you want the truth. The mm. truth is more important than optimism. Yeah. Than cynicism. It's true. True. The, the biggest truth is... On the streets. Absolutely, man. Right? Absolutely. Because people have no choice but to be authentic. Mm. You know, like people... And, and you're, you're like, sort of, like, bullied into being authentic. Like, yeah. if you're not real, if you're not yourself, like, people don't have it, like, no. in street culture. Because no. street culture is about bringing all the different elements of, of who you are to the table 
and like you know that that meshing that into into newness or like to 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 add your value to different rooms that you go into or like mm. different spaces that you go into and so for me like that's that's why street culture is always at the cusp or at the edge of what's next yeah. because it's like it's an authentic place it's a, it's a mm. place of truth they don't take fools kindly yeah yeah, yeah. they'll be on you yeah they? man as a as an actor because there is a place in your mind yeah I, i'm presuming that you have to go to be this persona this this other person yeah how much of it do how much do you adapt to your childhood upbringing the streets how much of that um because obviously you know movies like kid adulthood uh you know it, it's almost like repurposing in mm. a way to to, to a, a, yeah. a, a cinematic kind of yeah. situation um but but you do have to put hat, heads on don't you you have yeah. to change your hat a lot i think with kid adulthood and the, that era of my life like with kiddo, I was there. Like I was, I was seventeen in that film. Mm. I was like, that was twenty years ago for me. So two thousand and four, mm. I was seventeen in college. I was in that film. I was there. Like you know, I was grew up in in Holloway, and then I was going to college in West London, and that's how I auditioned to go into the film. Wow. So I was like, even auditioning, I remember thinking I didn't want to stay after late after college because I didn't want to be no one, no one's ends that late wow. but I was going college yeah, in West London I get it but it wasn't my ends I wasn't no. trying to stay in like West Labyrinth Grove till like 7 no. because I don't I had an audition all like 8, 9 like I wasn't yeah. trying to stay in that ends especially was, back then as well yeah I was trying to be my yeah. ends like this yeah. is like we're talking what 2004 I was, I was and so like it just shows how much like you know we were in it and mm. I remember like even when No gave us the script I remember having a conversation with him and like they were like he was like, bro, feel free to change the words because like certain words like weren't accurate because you know slang moves so quickly. Mm. Like you know, even so, I was watching a comedian today. He had like a series of like old school slang. He went to college with me, and like some of the slang was like, you know, kids don't even say those things nowadays. <laughs> and then on top of that, I remember like, cause I was from North London. I went to college in West London. Like there was um there was, like, words they didn't even say mm. in West London. So I remember, like, I'll never forget this, like, the word bait. They just didn't say bait mm -mm -mm. in West. No. And I just found it confusing. <laughs> what do you mean you don't say bait? Like, someone from West is very true. Yeah, like, like what do you mean? You don't... What, <laughs> why, what, why is bait not a word? I'm like, oh, they're just like, oh, they didn't say... I can't remember, there was a few words they mm. just didn't say. Yeah. And I, it blew my mind, like, because I'm like, no, but everyone says this word. Yeah. And at that Have you time, not been on Channel U recently? Yeah, like, everyone, yeah. everyone says this one. They just weren't on it. And so, like, for me, I think I think what, what at that time, you know, people ends were a lot more divided, but, like, what the internet has done and facilitated mm. is that it's made everything more connected. And so, like, you know, as an actor back then, it was like I was in it. I was, like, really close to, to the streets, like, super. Mm. And then as I've grown older, I've been exposed to other things. Like I went to uni at the London School of Economics, studied law there. That showed me a whole different world. That mm. probably shaped my mind the most because it was like, you know, right now what we're in central London, like, my, my, my other students, like, lived there. Like, wow. like, there was a girl that I was friends with at, college, uh, at uni. She was, um, she lived in like literally Leicester Square. Like we could see like, wow. like into Leicester Square from a window. That's a whole nother yeah, level. Yeah, it was upbringing. just a whole other like world. And then like, you know, I remember there was another girl at a party at she lived um at a flat, but she lived across from like St. Martin Lane Hotel. Like I remember that like, that used to be a hot spot back mm. in the day. There used to be loads of parties there. I just couldn't believe like these people were like literally in the middle of London living in central London. And then on top of that, you know, I was then bringing my friends from ends to these parties because I'm always trying to connect like the cultures and like yeah. connect the worlds. I love like doing stuff like I love new experiences, but maybe because I went to a boys school, mm -hmm. maybe like I just like having a man them with me yeah. or like, like bringing a couple of the boys. I remember I was in LA not long ago and like one of my guys called me. I was like, oh, I wish you lot were here, man. Yeah, of course, because man. Like, you just want to be cracking joke and stuff uh. and so yeah for me as i've grown older i've been exposed to lots more different things and so like you know it's meant 
a little bit depending on what the role is it's meant a little mm. bit more research and mm. stuff like that into stuff and like just um assuming um different you know sort of tapping into different worlds but what i would say is like at the moment, my real life is richer than the characters that I've been able to play. So it'll be interesting to play more challenging roles mm. that take me, because I think my experiences and the stuff that I'm going through on a day to day, like, you know, as a dad, uh, as like, you know, as a son, as a yeah. friend, or even like as a friend, not just to my friends that I grew up with, mm. but my friends from all these different worlds that I'm connected to. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's so rich, you yeah. know, that I, I can't wait to get roles now that I'm getting a bit older that allow me to That's tap amazing. into the full breath of where I'm at. Now. Yeah, where you at in your life. Yeah, like so I can tap into different experiences yeah. and explore them more and learn a little bit more about humanity. Yeah. Because like that's what acting is, is like, you know, gaining a little bit more understanding about humanity and about the characters that you play and, and also understanding the world. And I'm so inquisitive as a person that, you know, writing allows me to do that, but mm -hmm. acting... Acting, I think my next phase of my acting career is to tap into that a little bit more and to go on more journeys of exploration mm. through the characters that I play. That's amazing. Just going back to what you were saying there about um, about the contrast of people that from acting and to now that you're you're yeah. mixing with and whatnot. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure you've had these out of body moments where you're introducing A to B with a handshake and you're looking like these are two worlds coming yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I created yeah, that. Exactly. Brilliant, you know. Um, but there's also this um, I guess there's this underpinning narrative that you have in your life that has been, you know, you've been grounded through class, through the streets, yeah. that becomes this commodity mm. to a lot of people that, you know, may live in, in Leicester Square yeah. or wherever, you know, because, um, I mean, it, it's what help, helps propel these authentic movie roles that you've, yeah. you've played a part in. Yeah. It's interesting now that you say, you know, coming of age and uh, having all of this, you know, in your, in your work belt, yeah. you know, there's these new horizons that maybe you would never have foreseen when you were doing adulthood. That, no, know. I think when I was in adult, like, kid adulthood, I was at college... When I was doing adulthood, I was finishing my uni degree, my law degree, and then, you know, like, another hood and, like, mm. you know, sort of the intent series and all of those movies Crazy. that I've been involved in, like, I, they, they define different eras of my life mm. as a person and where I'm at as a person. But where I'm, what I literally, like I said, what I'm most excited about is, like, you know... And also, when I was doing... To go back, when I was doing, like, Kid Altered and all, all those films... Mm. I was still figuring out who I was in the world. Like, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I moved... What, like, what's mad about my life, yeah, is that I moved to England when I was 10, but I was in a film that defines British youth culture when I was 17. But I wasn't wow. even really British. Like, bro, I was still, like... I'd spent... At that time when I did Kid Oj, yeah, mm. I'd spent more time in Nigeria than I'd spent in London. That's... He's do you know, do you know telling, how mad that it? is? Was telling of society in in Britain, but that is that is the UK, right? Yeah. And so, like you know, when I meet people and they're being like snooty about migration and stuff like that, yeah, 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 you yeah, just yeah. think actually, what defines Britishness and British culture yeah. is like people like me being able to contribute to it, even though I was at that point. I'd spent more time yeah. in Nigeria than I'd spent in the UK. Yeah, I can't even imagine what Britain would be like without those cultures. Do you get what I'm saying? It's just been rubbish. Yeah, just like, <laughs> no, but also what's amazing about Britain as well is that actually British culture, I was saying this to my younger son yesterday because he was talking about, he really gets up in arms about like the British Museum all the time. He hates the idea of the British Museum mm. because it's got all these things that are from all around the world. Of course. And yeah. like, this, like, he's the 11, mm. but he's been on it since he was, mm. since he ever found out. Mm. He's like, that's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. I want to go in there and steal back all the things. Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah. And I'm Course. like, I'm like, chill, chill, chill. I'm like, because you know what? British <clears> culture, <throat> in a way, at a point, like, you know, the British Empire was most of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Literally. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And so, British history is world history. Mm -hmm. And so, when people like myself, me from Nigeria, that is not, a cause of um that is not a cause of um sort of um accident. No. It's that is actually part of the narrative of British history and mm. world's history. Mm. Because 
the only reason I speak English is because English is the main language in Nigeria, which is the country I'm from. Mm-hmm. Like, do you get what I'm saying? And yeah. the only reason English is the main language is because Nigeria only came into existence because some British guy's wife voted in a newspaper to call my country Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And so in a way, like, we, we could pretend that, you know, the idea that I'm even Nigerian is, is not even, was invented by Britishness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, like, the idea that I'm Yoruba, which is the tribe I'm from, comes from my people, but the idea of Nigerianness is a wow. British idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the name Nigeria, it was given by a British person. It's, so it's in mind-bending. A, so, it, so, in a weird sort of way, like, actually, like, I was saying to my son, I was like, you know what, in a way, you should go to the British Museum because, actually, for you... To understand world history, you have to understand British history, and like yeah. actually, for you to understand yeah. Nigerian history, you have to understand Britishness, mm. and like you know, and well, and bizarrely for him, like his granddad's like like a white man, like bro, like <laughs> so like his mum's mixed race, like you know, yeah. your your granddad's white, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. actually like if if Britishness is the problem, you're part of the problem. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah, like yeah. in your DNA. Is bro, bro. I, <laughs> do, I, do you get what I'm saying? I know exactly. What I'm saying. My great great granddad uh, was from uh, Africa. Do, do so you know, like, so all of that yeah, is just like, it's, and and it, it's it's baffling again. Going back to the immigration side, yeah. Of things, and so, the, and the so way when, people when operate we talk is weird. about when we talk about like you know when we start getting into like migration and this and mm. that. Like for me, like I just think like we're humans. Like obviously we're mm. localized to wherever we live. But actually, that shouldn't be used as a way to divide us. That should be used as a way to understand us. Yeah, man. And, and understand the world. And even, like, like the idea of Nigerianness being a British idea. Mm. And the idea of all of that shouldn't be something that we fight about or get angry about. Mm. It should be something that we celebrate and try to understand more mm. so that we can, like, create new futures and new ideas. Mm. 100%. And bringing faith into the fold a little bit, because, obviously, that is really the, the main engine for mm. everything you do um and uh, talking to your son there like how how easy is it for you as a as a director mm. or a or a, um a peer mm. how is it you know is it easy talking to young people in a in a particular in a particular way particularly in the in the the, the world that you operate in, in i mean like you know with with kids i'm lucky right because i got to be young for longer because mm. i was in kid mm-hmm so everyone thought I was a kid for a long time. Now that I've got grey hairs, people are like, oh my gosh, you're old. I'm like, yeah, but I'm I'm 37 now, yeah? And, but because I did that film when I was 17, mm-hmm. people in their minds imagined me as young for a long time. Ever. You kind of are, in their minds. Yeah. Which is absolutely fun, right? And so <laughs> it is fun. And so in a way, I got away with being perceived as young mm. for longer than I should have mm-hmm. or than like people my age would be in the past, right? Mm-hmm. But then but then again, because I, I had kids young, I've been able to like communicate with my sons from young and like finding out. But I just talk to everyone the same. I talk to my sons like, the way I've just explained everything to you about Nigerian is... Do, do, do. You explain to them in I exactly the same I say to my son, like my son's 11, my youngest son, my oldest son's 12, there's an 18 month gap between them. I just talk to them from young. I just give them a real answer to everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay. like, And they take it how they take it and they process it how they process it. Yeah. And some of them, like I said, like even though I gave my son that big speech about the British Museum, he still feels how he feels. Yeah. But then I told my son, um, oh, you know what? If I was to get knighted, would you be up for it? He'll be like, yeah, dad, I'd love to go to the palace. I'd love... Um, so it's, yeah, like, it's yeah, all like, you totally. know, it's all, it's all like, you know, much ado about nothing really. Like, because he's like, he's still, he's still evolving in the way that he perceives the world. And uh, in terms of like younger people in my industry, for the younger actors, I love when they come up to me and they show me love, you're a legend. That's the new one. It's, it blows my mind because mm. then... I don't even know if I like it because I'm like, does that mean like I'm mad old or does that like for does ages? Does it stop now? For Do ages, it, you know? people coming up to me f- saying you're a legend. Mm, mm. I was torn between like wanting to punch them and wanting to hug them because I was thinking, what does that even mean? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, you're trying to like in an identification yeah, crisis. Yeah, you're trying to like <laughs> boy me off or you're trying to show me love. And yeah. so, but now I've learned to accept it as love. Mm. And then, um, 
And then in terms of like, you know, sort of like the young, young, like younger rappers or the younger street dudes, it's just, you know, approaching them with the truth constantly. I think mm. the truth is my guiding light. Mm. And like, you know, trying to be honest and trying to like give the right advice and try to like, you know, share share my experiences has mm. been my guiding light. And, mm. and so like for me, that's what I always try to do. But it's really interesting when the young actors and all of that come up to me and say, oh, you're a legend. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it? It's, it's, it's actually like, a lot of responsibility as well. Yeah, because I don't think of myself as a legend. Mm. I think of myself as like Femi Oyeniran mm. every morning. And I think of like what what solutions I'm going to bring to the problems mm. of the world each mm. day. And like through the medium that I work through, mm. like, you know, before I came here, I was working on a script. Mm. That's what I do or on a day-to-day or like I'm doing business. So I run a production company. So I'm trying to work things out at my mm-hmm. production company and like, you know, we've got a marketing arm to our business. I'm involved in a basketball team, the London Lions, which is like London's Ooh, like biggest basketball team. Yeah. So I'm doing all of that, but like I'm using all of these mediums, but actually really the easiest way to look at it is like, you know, there's a problem every day mm. and like what, which ones of my skills are going to help me to solve these problems. Right. So sticking with this, because you're a man of many arms and a lot of schedules Different teams, different PAs, people that are doing this, an agency that you've got to, you know, you've, you've got to kind of almost <clears throat> entertain, I suppose, because yeah. they, they have these preconceived ideas. You've got to reiterate what you want. What, who I am. Yeah, all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally. How do you, how, how do you compartmentalise this? How do you, uh, this is what people want to know. From somebody of an expert in your field. So how do you manage it? Yeah. It's like, it's still kind of, it is chaos, but it, it's not at the same time because I've always... It's like being ambidextrous, isn't it? Mm. And so it's... I just talk to people as much as possible and talk directly. So, like, it's easier for me to talk to you than for you to talk to my agent mm. or my assistant or my PA or my PM, my production manager mm. about getting me on a production. Or, yeah. So like where we can, I try to talk to whoever the equivalent of, so like we need Femi to come on this podcast. I want to speak to you mm-hmm. to sort it out. He's a real one because that's get, exactly what happened. And get there Connected. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Because like if you're going through any of these people, mm. they, might, they might have a preconception yeah. of what, I should be doing or what I shouldn't be doing and they might stop what is potentially like a pure connection. Mm. And so in a way, for me, I try to seek that. I try to link people directly as much as possible. I try to be accessible, like to to, to people that I need to be accessible to. Mm-hmm. I, I try to be um, stick to my word. Mm-hmm. So if I say I'm going to do something, like I was in LA like last week. That's right. But the week before I was in LA, I came back, it was my son's 11th birthday, my British museum son. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was his birthday. So I had to come back because, you know, as you mm. as you probably have now figured out, this guy is like, yeah, yeah. he's a character. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, he'll hold, hold you to yeah, account. Yeah, he, he, he don't forget things. He don't play, he don't play, right? <laughs> he, he, and so this son, is his birthday, so I had to rush back. And then I, I said to people, I'm coming back. I said to one of my friends, I'm coming back to LA next week. Um, but I'll let you know by Tuesday because of my son's birthday on Monday <laughs> whether I'm coming or not. And then um, I messaged on Tuesday and he was like, that's crazy. Like, people usually say stuff and then don't, don't do, do it. it. Like, I was like, yeah, but why would I say it? Why would I say mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. If I'm not going to do it, why would I say it's it? Honor. Like, it's honour. I just wouldn't say it. I just would yeah. be like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or like, no. Mm. Or, or like, you know, I'll let you know. And that really, I will let you know. And so for me, how I manage my schedule is by speaking directly to people as much as possible, sticking to my word. If I say I'm going to do something, mm. I do it. So like, for instance, like, you know, I was invited to a fashion show and someone had already invited me to a dinner. The fashion show would have been litter mm. than the dinner. But I just went to the dinner because I said I was already going to the dinner. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to work on that principle. Whatever is in the diary first wins. Yeah. And I I don't try to chase clout or 
money or whatever. So if I've got something in a diary, that's what wins. If it's with you, if like the BBC called me this afternoon and said they wanted me to do something, I was never going to do that because mm-hmm. I said I was doing this mm-hmm. already. And that helps me to eliminate, um, helps me to stay on course, helps me to live on purpose, helps me to um, to design the life that I want to see mm-hmm. rather than like, me being influenced and blown with the wind. Mm. If you're, uh, if scenario, if you, uh, if you're being personable in one sense, in a conversation like us, yeah. but I'd initially gone to the agent. How do you incentivize the agent? Because there must be times where you have to say to yourself, oh, "Let me deal with this." Yeah. You know, after a while, they're going to be like, "Do you want to deal with it all?" Do yeah. you know what I mean? How do you balance that off? You know, from um, external companies and. Not just the agent. I'm not picking on the agents. No, agents. Like, I mean, I've got lots of agents. Oh, no, yeah. It's kind of weird. Like, I... Because I was reflecting on how, all the agents. I've got an acting agent. Yeah. I've got, like, a, a brand partnership agent. I've got a, a US directing agent. I've got a US manager. I've got a lawyer. I've got a UK directing and writing agent. I've got... I feel like there's one more. I've got... Did I say an acting one? It's... Whichever one it is, they're going to be pretty bummed out that yeah, they, they, so, they haven't shouted them out. There's all these agents, <laughs> right? And and they're all doing amazing work and they're mm. all trying to like put me in places yeah. that I'm currently not in and trying to seek out opportunities for me, which I think is amazing yeah. and is incredible, even like even though like, you know, I'm a legend now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and but like these people are trying to like reinv- like almost reinvigorate my life every day by going out there mm. and and preaching the gospel according to mm. Femio and Niran yeah. to, to the whole world, right? And so I love them for that. But at the same time there's just certain things like that I am quite self-sufficient. And mm. and actually, what I love about my agents is that they recognise that mm. and they allow me to be that. And remember, I've got a company. So I've got people that work for me there. So it's me and my business partner, Nikki Slimting, that we own a production company for called Fan Studios. And, you know, we've got people that work for us. We've got people, like, you know, who depend on us to, to make to develop mm. business mm. so then I'm running that alongside everything and so yeah so it's it's a balance but I think my agents recognise that I'm an entrepreneurial person mm-hmm. and that I'm self-sufficient and like unless I'm massive I massively need their help they just let me get on with it yeah and they've got bigger fish to fry yeah. actually compared to no the idea of, the idea of them is to like not connect me to you because mm. I know you mm, mm, mm. Yeah, the last thing you want is that kind of... The idea of them is to connect me to people I don't know yeah. and like to ideas I'm not aware of yeah. and to people that are not aware of me, not to create a barrier between me and you. Mm. Mm. But people that are new to the industry, I think, don't understand that. Yeah, they don't understand how good they got it. Yeah, and they don't understand that you could just say, like, you yeah. know, rather than... Because sometimes people try to hide behind their agent... Rather than like me telling my agent to tell mm. you something, mm-hmm. I could just tell you, bro. Yeah. Da, 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 like, you know, but people, like, you know, but you work that out and, and you grow in the yeah. industry to where you need to grow to. Some people carry on forever hiding behind their agent or manager or, or wherever, manager yeah. or whoever, but then it doesn't over, strengthen them. No, but over yeah. time, you know, they'll learn. Like, do you mm. know what I mean? And so, like, I've been in it for too long mm. to underplay the importance of real mm. connection and a level of self-sufficiency yeah. god i love that in fact this this brings me on nicely because from the ground up you're yeah. now in this seismic market space of, yeah. of the film and entertainment industry yeah what uh, what advice god it's so cliche to say that but yeah. if you're a kid yeah right a young person right mm. now what advice what real solid beneficial advice can you give them in 2024 that, that that could potentially have them you know live on for another five years mindset it's a tough one isn't it i think i think because i'm i'm a product of it and i live by it just try to be self-sufficient mm. as much as possible Build a community of trusted people. I, I don't think you can achieve anything by yourself. It's actually weird. Mm. The idea of self-sufficiency is really stupid mm. because no one is self-sufficient. Yeah. It's really mad. <laughs> we use it all the time. Everyone's like codependent. Yeah. We're all codependent on our team and mm. our network and the people that we know and mm. all of that stuff. I think you should try to build a robust network 
of people that support you, but never forget to make yourself an asset on continue to make yourself an asset mm. <clears throat> to all the people around you. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be friends with someone that is like mm. useless, inactive. Um, Faux pas everywhere. Yeah, yeah, no one wants to be friends with that. Yeah. And I think as a young person, just always continue to perceive yourself as an asset mm. and always, always continue to consider yourself to build yourself as an asset to your network around you because actually your network mm. is the reason you are wherever you are. No one is self-sufficient. So if you're strengthening yourself, that's strengthen You're strengthening yourself. your network. Yeah. God, I love that. So if you strengthen yourself, it's like, you know, um, I can't remember the Jay-Z lyric properly, but it's one of my favourite lyrics by him, which is mad. He says something about, it's on, um, he says something like, if someone's, you can be each other's crutches if you're broke or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's on reasonable doubt. And so it's like, Truth. actually, yeah. um, if everyone in your crew, um, crook, um, no, if everyone in your crew is rich or crew is re rugged, so if somebody falls, you could be each other's crutches. Yeah, bro, real talk. And so, yeah. and so like for me, that's, that's it right yeah. there. It's like actually, you, you are an asset to your network mm. and your network is your crutch. Mm. And so in your journey of self-sufficiency, you need that network to always prop you up. And there's so many people that help me all the time to do everything. Everything that I do mm. is like not a product of myself. It's a product of my network and the fact that I just know people in so many different walks of mm. life. Like if I, if I needed like, you know, food, I know what, like one yeah. of my friends has got a company that does that. If I need trainers, I know the people I can hit up. If I need anything, like yeah. literally, like, m my strength is having a network of people that are doing amazing things in the world. If you need, like, if you if you want a bank account and you've never had a bank account before, I did that for one of my friends because mm -hmm. I've, I've got a guy at a bank. Yeah. Like, you know, plug, plug, you plug. Know, you know, literally, like, if I've got lawyers. I've yeah. got, like, you know, literally. Yo, I rate that so much. Anything you can think of, not even just in entertainment, yeah. just, like... Life. But, but, but that... Oh, we just... It's, it's mostly undervalued. We, but it, I guess the likes of yourself do that, you know, intuitively. Yeah. There's a like big up poet, poet's corner. I, I, you know, to his own admission, on came on podcast. Uh, to his own admission, that's really eighty percent of his his life because you know he's a great presenter. He's a he's an enabler. Yeah. And uh, the sooner you people we the sooner that's put into our every day, yeah. the, the better your, your life will be. Little, I'm telling you, like, for me, I, I just think when I tell stories, I'm telling stories about my people. When I'm doing interviews, it's about my people. Mm. It's, not, it's never just about me. It's about, like, you know, all the different people that I know that have, that have supported me. And I continue to support. I do the same for them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and having a strong network of people that do everything so that I'm able to do everything. Mm -hmm. I love it. My brother, thank you so much for joining us, man. No, I've been happy to come here, man. Yeah. It's been a different chat, different yeah. type of chat. Different vibes. Different vibes, man. I like it. What's the future? What's the future, fam? The future is I've got a film in the US that I'm setting up, which is why I've been going there so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come I've on. I've got a film over there that I'm setting up and that I'm hoping will get greenlit in the next few months. We've done the agreement, everything. And then um, I've got um, like UK stuff that I just love. There'll always be like, you know, UK street culture film that mm -hmm. I'm doing. Like, but then I want to tell more stories like, you know, about small boats, mm -hmm. about like, you know, like just everything that I'm going through about mm. fatherhood, about relationships, about all of that. I want to, you know, create stories that allow me to delve into all those different things mm -hmm. as an actor and as a, as a, as a writer and a director. And um, so, yeah, so I'm always creating like independent UK films because that's what I came up in. And um, so I always have that. And then TV. So I did the evolution of black British music, which what? is like the most exciting thing I've that's ever done. That's incredible. Like that, we won an RTS award for that. And then that's going on Netflix in October. Celebrate that. Yeah, man. Congratulations, it's on Netflix my brother. in October. It's going on, it's um, going on Virgin Atlantic from May. 
So yeah, so yeah, all them all them American trips and you'll be watching. I'll be watching my own program. Get them ratings right up there, man. Yeah, man. So yeah, so I'm I'm like you know just on reflection, like you know, I've just been excited about all the things I've been able to do, but the fact that the projects now that I'm getting to this stage of my career, I own IP, Mm. and so because I own IP, I'm able to go out in the world and exploit that IP and. Do stuff and expect because I, you know, because I've got a legal background. I'm mm-hmm. really excited by the fact that, you know, we can do the Netflix deal. We can do the Virgin deal with something that I made in 2022. Mm. It's blessed, and it's all about the assets. It's all about the identity yourself. Yeah, really. and and we need and we we as creative people, that's what I've not really been. Sp- like explore I've spoken about being people but like you know as creative people it's about time that we're part of that that how do we present our IP to Mm. the world how do we present music to the world how do we do a premiere that is not in Leicester Square but that is at you know a music venue and 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 you know we've got performances and clips of the film and installation like what we did mm-hmm. it with Chapin last year. How do we like you know tell history like we did with drunk history mm-hmm. with narrative and um with narration mm-hmm. like we did last year with Comedy Central? How do we like you know? There's just all these different things I that I I'm trying to do that is different to where I started. But I never, like, you know, people always trying to, like, oh, you, you only make those hood films, da, da, da. I will forever make one of those films mm. because that's how I got into the game. And yeah. I'm not ashamed of how I came in the Hell game. Hell no. Just because we cultures, love him as well. Just because culture's evolved mm. to the point where, you know, people from the ends are in, I don't know, Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Like, actors that I know that are my brethren. Incredible, are, like, yeah. In that Black Panther or in Disney, other Disney franchises, doesn't mean that there's no room for the story about a kid that's grown up in inner city London or, or you know, I don't know, in Conch somewhere. Yeah. And so for me, uh, those stories are really important, but I do want to, you know, develop and tell other stories. So, like, you know, I've got a bunch, I've got a relationship um, sort of rom-com. I've got, um, like, you know... Uh, a film about kids going on holiday and getting up to madness on their first holiday. I've got like those so stories good. that I wanted to, cause, but we've all lived those yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, 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 we've yeah. just not seen it on screen yet. Well, we'll look forward to that. Wow, Femi, how are you near, man? No, so no, come here, man. Come here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for passing to no, through, man. For me. Wow, there you go. That's it, right there. Street Culture Podcast, Central London, Central as you could ever be, Piccadilly Circus, Arts Arcade. Thank you so much for joining us. More next week. Thank you, Femi. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>